In this video, we're going to look at how to make some colorful gradient waves in Touch Designer. Now, gradients are not new. We, we've all seen them before, but I became interested in them again recently after I saw this tweet where this person says, what's the deal with the new Stripe.com? Everybody's going nuts over it. Uh, I never heard of Stripe.com, but I went to have a look. And they have this nice animated gradient at the top of their website. And looking at it, I could imagine how it was done, but I wasn't sure about these sharp lines that sometimes appear and then disappear again into the structure. And then I read somewhere they implemented an Easter egg with the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. I'm a big fan of the Konami code. In this case, it gives us this panel with some controls and we can play with the gradients. After seeing this, I had a pretty good idea of how it was done and started creating my own version in Touch Designer. And here are just a couple of examples of uh, a few things I created with it. Right, so as always, we start from scratch. And the first thing we need is a grid sop. And then we go straight to our standard rendering setup with a geometry comp, then a camera, and then a render top. From the render, we drop an out and switch on display. I want my render to be in a square format, so I'm setting both width and height to 1080. Next, we need a material, which is going to be the GLSL mat. Drag it on top of Geo and select parameter material. We also want wireframes, so under the common tab, pick open gel tessellated wireframe and let's also bring the camera a bit closer so set translate z to 2. Next we need a displacement map so let's give ourselves some space and drop a noise top. From that we need to drop a no and call it displacement. Now we need to pass that to our GLSL mat so under the samples tab we type S displacement and drag our displacement top. Now we need to use that, so we edit our vertex shader and declare at the top uniform sample to the S displacement. Our texture is monochrome, so we're only interested in the red channel. So we can store the value in a float which is going to be float noise equals texture s displacement uv bracket zero dot xy and then the red channel now we need another vector for position which is going to be vec3 pos equals uppercase p and we're going to modify the y axis so pos dot y plus equals noise now we just need to replace this P here by POS and save it. And we get this terrible mess. We need to adjust a few parameters in our noise. Let's set the period to 3, harmonics to 1, amplitude to 0 0.3 and offset to 0. Let's have a look at the geometry to see what we're doing. So displacing the y-axis doesn't make much sense like this. We need to change the orientation of the grid to the z-x plane. Now it makes a bit more sense and we're creating this uh, hilly surface. Next what we want to do is to tilt these vertices. The ones which are at the front are going to go down and the ones at the back are going to go up. We can do that with another float which is going to be float tilt equals uv bracket 0 dot y minus 0 0.5 and now all we need to do is to add that to our y axis now let's change the camera projection to orthographic and have a closer look at what we did here 
The whole grid was tilted to face the camera, but the displacement is still happening in the y-axis. And I think this is the key to create this effect. We can animate our noise using the classic abs time.seconds times 0.1 and we can do that for both x and z. You might notice that the edges look a bit weird and that is because of our simplest settings. So in our GLSL mat, let's change extend u and v to hold. Now we can bring the camera a bit closer, so let's change ortho width to 1. And you might notice that the animation is not very smooth, and that is because of the pixel format of the noise. So let's change that to 32-bit float mono. Now the animation is smooth, but we introduced another problem, which are negative values. We can see these bumps going below the surface. We can fix that with a limit top. We set the limit type to clamp and the minimum to zero. And now we're back to our hilly surface again. The next thing we need to work on are these waves at the bottom. We don't want our grid to go up and reveal nothing behind it. And we can fix that with another top, which is going to be a ramp. Let's set the type to vertical and the interpolation to ease in, ease out. And then we drag the white marker to the center. And then we just need to multiply these two. And by multiplying, you might notice that we lost the pixel precision. So we need to change the fixed layer to input one. We don't need the gradient to be so extreme. We can add a few more markers and make it fade to black only close to the edges. Now, another thing I like to do is to set my own time variable. Let's pause this and try to step to the next frame. The animation is jumping because we're using absolute time. And we can replace that with our own time constant. So let's drop a constant chop and then a speed and then a null which we can call time because it's all this is going to do and then we can replace our abs time by this new constant and it's a bit too fast so I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.05 and, and just invert the sign for tz now if we were to pause the timeline, we can step over and see the animation frame by frame. Now we're ready to start working on our colors. And we can copy this noise and paste it three times. We need to make them look a bit different from each other. So I'm just going to type a few numbers here. Don't worry too much about copying the exact numbers. I don't think there are any wrong answers here. You can just try your own numbers. And once we get a bit further with the effect, you probably want to go back and tweak these numbers and try to see what looks good, what doesn't, and what works best for you. I'd say just make sure that they have unique numbers so they produce unique outputs and they're not aligned or on top of each other. And now finally some color. Let's drop a constant top and then just pick any color you want. I'm going to go with this pale orange. And now we need to multiply and connect both the noise and the constant. And we need to do the same for all three of these noises. So just copy both of these tops 
and replace the first input of multiply and then pick a different color. And then once again the same for the last noise and also a different color. Now we need to combine all of these with a composite top. And we can change the operation to add. From that we drop a null and call it color. We're also going to pass that to our material. So let's call it S color and the top is going to be color. This is going to be used in our pixel shader, but first we need to pass the UV coordinates. So in our vertex shader, let's type out vec2 vuv and then set vuv to uv bracket 0 dot xy. Now let's edit our pixel shader and type in vec2 vuv. We also want to declare a uniform sampler to d s color and now we can override this color vector with texture s color and buv now let's save that and switch wireframes off and we have our colors now it's pretty clear that the density of the grid is quite low so let's change both rows and columns to 60. And we can also make these hills a lot flatter. So let's change the scale of the noise to 0.5 or even lower, like 0 0.25. Another thing we can do to get a lot more waves is to change the limit type from clamp to zigzag. You can see we get a lot more waves. Now we can play with the colors, but I also want to be able to use some other blend modes. And for that we need transparency. We can do that with a reorder top. Where we set the output alpha to input one red. And we also need the pixel format to be RGBA. And now we have transparent pixels, which allow us to use other operations like over. And we can do the same for all of our three noises. Output alpha red and 32 bit float RGBA. Now we need some background color, so let's copy this constant and change the color to something else and connect that to our composite. And now we can play with the colors. I'm not sure what works. Uh, I've done this uh, a few times and every time I do it, it looks a bit different. So it's very experimental, just pick whatever you like. Another thing that looks nice is to add some grain to this. And for that we create another copy of one of our noises. And again, just change the numbers a bit. So it looks different. And we'll need yet another noise. But this time it's going to be simplex 2D and we drag the period all the way down. And we can animate it with uh, abstime.seconds because this time it's just white noise. Then we combine both with a multiply. And we need to make some space here. And we can combine that with our other noise using an add.
the resolution is very low so let's change our white noise to 1080 by 1080 and we also need to change the fixed layer to input 1 the same for the add the same for the other multiply and the same for the composite now we have this nice grain flowing together with our waves and we can play with the colors again I'm going to try to recreate the ones I had at the beginning of the video. Or well, maybe not. I'll, I'll just replace this yellow by some blue. Yeah, that's okay. All right, we can keep that. Another thing that works quite well is to add a shape on top of this. We can start with a circle top. And then we need a multiply and a transform. Let's make the circle a bit bigger and then scale it down again in the transform. And to combine that with the background, we use a under top. Again, make sure we're using the right fixed layer. So input one input one and we can increase the resolution of the circle as well to 1080 by 1080 i think this is pretty cool and i hope you agree uh, it's quite open-ended probably your result doesn't look much like mine but that's okay just play with it and use your own colors and try different blend modes Maybe add some other stuff to the mix like we did with the grain here. And yeah, just play with it. So this is it for me. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Otherwise, until the next video.